it's uh, just uh, right at 11.30 Eastern at the moment. Uh, we will get started in a few minutes. We'll just give everyone a minute or two to join. Uh, good, good morning and good afternoon to, depending on which time zone you're in across our country. Um, uh, again, my name is Remy, and I'm uh, so delighted to have all of you uh, continue to join us on lesson two of the uh, MBlock 5 online training Steam on Board course. Uh, we're, uh, uh, Mina and myself are delighted to, to have you join us and to continue learning alongside uh, for this uh, fundamentals in coding uh, using MBlock 5. Uh, I see many of you uh, are, are joining us uh, again for the second week and uh, so excited to share uh, uh, all the information with you. While you're waiting on your end, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to get started by opening MBlock 5, uh, opening the lesson material for this week, joining the MBlock 5 uh, community, um, and all available at logicsacademy.com forward slash steam on board. Uh, so again, if you simply go to logicsacademy.com uh, steam on board website, uh, which looks like this, uh, you'll be able to uh, open the software, MBlock 5. You'll be able to join the MBlock 5 discussion, and you'll be able to download Lesson 2 uh, material uh, all on the website. And actually, for those of you who have seen, the trainings are being recorded, and they're available uh, right um, uh, uh, on this site as well. So you can actually go back and watch Lesson 1, and we'll be posting Lesson 2, uh, of course, uh, 24 hours or so after uh, today is completed. Uh, so again, if, if, if you haven't uh, done so already, make sure to access uh, the material for today. Uh, make sure to join in the conversation. I see some uh, a good question that we wanted to pose for today was, uh, what is one thing you hope to learn using uh, from using MBlock 5 in the classroom? Uh, and kind of sharing your uh, future plans. You can continue that conversation uh, right in the community chat or on the chat here. Uh, in the team's discussion. So again, make sure to have MBlock 5 open, um, make sure to join the community conversation, and make sure to access the materials for today. And all that is available on the Logics Academy website uh, forward slash Steam on board. So that's where we're going to get started. And again, I know uh, many of you are returning for uh, lesson two today. Um, uh, feel free to, uh, again, just uh, give us all a warm welcome in the chat, uh, just to remember how to use the features of the conversation here. Uh, on, the on, on the bottom, if you hover over, you'll be able to um, uh, click on the chat bubble, and you'll be able to introduce yourself, uh, maybe uh, again, uh, to get started, uh, one thing you're hoping to get out of this course as, as a whole, uh, to share that in, in the conversation. So it's uh, shortly uh, after 11.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, and, and we'll, uh, so we'll get started. Uh, again, this, this training uh, lesson two is being uh, recorded. Um, so excited to have all of you uh, join us uh, to continue on uh, the learning here. Um, and again, if, if you want to uh, take a moment to introduce yourself, maybe where you're from and the grade you're working with, as well as one thing you'd like to get out of uh, this training. Uh, I know we're on lesson two only, so still uh, six more weeks to go, uh, but one thing you'd like to take away um, uh, walking away from this training. And while you do that, uh, I'll, again, I'll just remind everyone that you can access all the resources for today, as well as all in between uh, the th everything's available at logicsacademy.com forward slash steam on board. Uh, you can open up MBlock 5 software, download it on your desktop or operate in the browser. Uh, you can open up the lesson material for each lesson we're working through. And all the lessons are now aligned to the provincial standard. So that's something that's really exciting. So no matter which province you're in across the country, you'll be able to uh, see the curriculum alignment for each lesson we're doing in this course and you can join the MBlock 5 community. So again, I, I urge you to start by going to logicsacademy.com forward slash steam on board. Here you can open up the MBlock 5 software. You can open up the discussion to continue the conversation. 
uh, throughout the eight weeks. And uh, as well, here you'll be able to access the curriculum. So if you click on download curriculum material for lesson two, which is today, uh, you'll be able to access that lesson plan and you'll see in that lesson plan that now uh, all the provincial alignment uh, is available above ISTE and CSTA. So whether you're in BC, Alberta, Ontario, Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, you'll see all your provincial alignment in that material. And this material is available for you to use with your students. And lastly, all the lessons are recorded and they're available on our YouTube channel uh, open so that you or your colleagues can watch it after today as well. So feel free to uh, access all that material. Um, academy.com forward slash steam on board. So again, my name is Rami and I'm excited to get started with you today. Um, as a reminder, this is all part of our uh, virtual training uh, series for educators. Um, you can learn more about this at logicsacademy.com forward slash virtual uh, training where you have access to learning from Minecraft to MakeBlock, uh, Wonder Workshop, Microsoft solutions, all for free, all available at home uh, anytime you'd like. Um, so I urge you to take advantage of that. Um, and again, uh, we're going to be working on mBlock 5 to make sure to open up the software, whether you're downloading it or working on the browser. And that all your resources, videos, curriculum, and group discussion are available on logicscammy.com forward slash steam on board. Uh, and make sure to join our community uh, to open up discussions for this conversation around mBlock 5. There's a specific discussion group as I shared with you for it, but also uh, join the conversation for all the best of the best in STEM robotics and coding. All right, and without any uh, further uh, ado, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mina to lead us in uh, lesson number two for the Logix uh, STEAM on board uh, program. Uh, and again, uh, really excited to have all of you with us here. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Rami, for for the introduction. And uh, I'm really happy to be back to continue with lesson two. And I hope you kind of uh, enjoyed lesson one um, with us. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen so that we can um, continue our uh, our discussion and, and how we can get to know mBlock 5. So uh, just bear with me as I as I do that. All right. Um, so I hope you're able to to see this um, on on uh, your side as well. Like I'm sharing my screen with you. Um, and what I've opened here is the lesson two uh, lesson plan. Um, and we're gonna go through uh, multiple files together um, in this session. So we'll have the lesson plan. We'll have the PowerPoint, um, the the slide deck, and um, we'll also use mBlock 5. So if you have those open um, on your uh, device, that'll be uh, that'll be great. Um, so before I before I begin, I wanted to um, remind everyone that we played a game yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last week, um, that was uh, called Space Adventures. And um, during that game, I did forget to mention that this was meant as a hook to hook in your students and to to bring your students in to get used to, um, you know, mBlock 5 or just to kind of um, get them interested in mBlock 5, but it wasn't meant for them to um, overwhelm them or overwhelm you as an instructor. Um, so I just wanted to, to bring that off uh, and just, re just remind everyone that um, it, it was just a hook. So um, I do apologize for that. And on that note, I do want to um, start off with uh, today's hook. So um, the hook for today, and you can uh, you know type this in the chat as I'm speaking, uh, is what is a program? What is a program? So your definition, you may remember it from uh, last session, but what is a program? You can uh, enter it into uh, the chat there. Um, so as you can see, uh, as you're as you're typing in. Um, Lesson two is called Pandas Greeting. And again, it covers the uh, subject of computer science, 
the level of difficulty is beginner and it usually takes about 45 minutes uh, for this session. So, or for this lesson rather, um, and we'll try to uh, be within the that timeline. Um, so uh, after that, we have the objectives. So we have objectives, overview, and the key focus. Those are the main points that I will uh, quickly go over. Um, and the students, by the end of this lesson, will start to be or begin to start writing a program using block-based language and block, which you um, have started uh, last week or you're starting new today. That's absolutely fine. Um, and we're going to be using sprites, which is our characters um, that are on mBlock 5. We're also going to introduce how to change backgrounds because we never did that last week. And um, we're going to use all of this to communicate a story. We're going to um, get the sprites and the backgrounds to work together um, and communicate a story. We will also distinguish uh, the differences between two similar blocks that allow the sprites to communicate. And uh, finally, we will, uh, as I mentioned, we'll add a back, uh, background to the project. And um, in this lesson, you will, uh, the students will also get to explore the different uh, library for sprites as well as backgrounds to think critically and, and talk about um, the sequential uh, set of instructions I kind of gave it away there for a program, um, as well as uh, incorporate feedback uh, from their peers and make plans to revise their project. So uh, I'll talk about that later on, but um, that is the, the main objectives and overview uh, of this lesson. And uh, finally, we're going to use mBlock uh, to program um, a story. So um, I'm going to just pop into this uh, the chat and see what everyone is uh, is saying there. So uh, a lot of good, a lot of good uh, definitions. So a program is something that is created uh, that someone or something else can follow. Absolutely, thank you, Oliver. Um, so you're you're all uh, right on there. And um, uh, just to kind of give you a, a formal definition of what. Uh, a program is, it's a set of instructions uh, that are executed by a computer or a hardware that performs a, a specific task. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So uh, I'm going to jump into the, the PowerPoint um, for the lesson. So if you have that open, you can follow with me or um, you can follow on Teams as well. So lesson two is um, all about pandas greeting and um, we're just a quick review as I mentioned there we're going to talk about or review the the basic interface of mBlock 5 and there's four main areas that um, we explored last week um, the main area that we saw was the the menu bar we're going to explore that a little bit more today and that allows you to select language open uh, a new file, save a new file, um, and find example programs. The stage area, um, this is where you can customize sprites, add backgrounds, um, and connect even uh, other mBlock uh, devices. So it's um, uh, it, we're not limited to just mBlock 5 and, and the sprites moving on the screen, but there's so many other devices that um, you're able to connect to using mBlock 5. And then we have the block area, um, the library of programming blocks sorted by, um, by color-coded categories. And we're going to see um, a new category today. And then finally, the script area is where we drag our blocks and um, where we really program our code to, um, to get it running in this uh, stage area. We also um, looked at different icons that uh, we explored as well. We had the green flag, which helped us start a program, um, the stop button, which stops the program, and the full screen and exit full screen uh, buttons that helped us uh, you know, get in, in and out of the, the full screen mode. And we also played uh, a game 
space adventures and we explored how that was uh, working behind the scenes. So I hope you were not intimidated with um, with the all the code there at the beginning. So we're going to get our hands on uh, learning at this time and we're going to make a sprite speak. So um, I'll get into. Uh, so if you if you recall, a sprite is a character um, on uh, on M block five and you can change the sprites and um, and go through different uh, characters at any time. Um, but I wanted to kind of highlight the programming blocks that we used last week and then the ones that we're going to be using today. So the first um, the first block that we used last week was under events. It's the block area under events and it's when flag is clicked and uh, this allowed us to execute the subsequent instruction blocks attached to this block after clicking the green flag. And you can see the example um, on the right side, which includes the event. And then today we're going to explore uh, the looks uh, category, um, especially two very similar blocks. And we're going to talk about the differences and similarities uh, between them. And we're going to get our uh, sprite to speak. So if you haven't done so already, um, you can open mBlock uh, software and make sure you are it usually defaults to devices, which we are not using. Um, and uh, we're going to go into sprites. So if you have mBlock 5 open, uh, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to open my uh, mBlock 5 so that you can see um, what I'm doing there. I'm just going to, uh, not this, this is the, the full screen mode, which I don't need. There's uh, two other, uh, you know, options there to change how big you want your screen. So for the for the panda there, um, so one is making it bigger, one's making it uh, smaller there. So for this purpose, um, I will make it bigger. Now, uh, we're going to first talk about our first. We're going to drag out an event block. Um, so you see how if I'm on devices, I didn't, I forgot to switch to sprites. So um, on devices, there's no flag clicked because we're, it's, it's telling you that you're using a device. So if you switch to sprites, the sprites tab, um, the flag is now available for you to drag. So again, uh, very similar to what we did last week, you're going to click and drag and drop into your, um, your area here. Uh, so we're going to take out an event called when flight clicked and we're going to explore the two different um, two different uh, say or look blocks uh, to to see what's going to happen uh, when we attach it to the what the when flight clicked so I'm going to take out the say hello for two seconds block and you can notice that there is a gray area that when I get close to the event, this gray area indicates that it wants to connect. So um, as soon as I let go of my mouse, um, the blocks connect. If you are not in this close area, it won't connect and therefore um, we'll see that the code will not run. So make sure you connect. And um, I, I, I'll pause here for a second and ask uh, a simple question to and this is also that you can um, share with your students or ask your students or learners the same question um, to encourage them to think about what will happen um, in this you know simple code is let's let's predict what's going to happen between uh, this block that we are just using to say hello for two seconds and also this block that just says hello. So if you want um, and uh, able to, you can message in the chat and predict the difference between the say hello for two seconds and the say hello block. And then we'll, um, as you're writing that in the chat, uh, I will go ahead and play uh, that code. So I'm going to click the flag to get started. And we're going to see that you know, Panda said 
hello for two seconds and um, and you can count the number of seconds that Panda is going uh, or saying there. I'm going to click it again. And um, and I, I see some predictions coming in, so this is really good. Um, and we're going to test out the second one, which is just say hello. Click flag. And what do we notice here? What do we notice with this, the, just the say hello block with, without the number of seconds? That um, correct, uh, Bridget, it stays on there, continuously uh, says hello forever, um, while the say hello for two seconds block only um, uses or, or gets the sprite to say hello for a specified number of seconds. So you can talk about um, you know, predictions with your students uh, to get them to predict different options um, and different scenarios that we have for, um, for different blocks before you go ahead um, and show it to them. And this is encouraging discussion um, within the whole class. So um, you can go ahead and uh, you can add a message in that say block. So uh, M, M block software has the ability to manipulate the message. You can also manipulate the number of seconds that your panda will say this, um, this particular message. So you can say, um, and then just kind of connected to last week where um, panda was, uh, you know, going through space and he's landing, uh, he's landing on earth. So We'll continue our lesson or our story today uh, when Panda arrives to Earth. So you can write something like, um, you know, I've made it on Earth. And when you do that, um, you can press enter. And when you click on the flag, Panda will say that particular uh, sentence which you uh, just wrote in. And you can also increase or decrease the number of seconds depending on how long you want Panda to say, um, you know, that sentence. So I want you to keep this in mind um, as we are developing our story um, and see how well we can use the seconds, uh, you know, say a certain message for a number of seconds um, before we create our story. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention that we may not have discussed um, last week is how to do how do you delete a block? And this is also in um, the lesson plan. How do you delete a block? It's very simple. Um, it just goes back to where it came from, and you just hold it, or you click and drag onto the uh, categories of the different um, blocks, which are color coded, and then you just Click let go and it goes away and this block um, kind of disappears and you've you've deleted it there. So if you don't want a, a particular block, it's really simple to just click and drag it to uh, where it came from and then it will just delete. So I hope this makes a little bit more sense with uh, getting our sprites to speak. The other thing I wanted to uh, to quickly mention, and this is also in the lesson plan, which I'll jump into is what if I don't want my panda to be in the middle? What if I just want my panda to be, you know, on the bottom left hand corner? It's really simple to just click and drag the panda into a particular area on the screen where you want him to start. And um, as you let go, uh, that's where it will be. And um, you can also not use the motion blocks because we used motion uh, blocks last week to get Panda to move, um, you know, a certain number of steps. But this time we're not using motion and just rather um, changing his position as he starts. Um, so that is a very quick uh, kind of introduction in M block five with uh, using save blocks, how to delete a block and um, also changing the position of our panda. Now, 
uh, going back into um, our lesson here, so I'm just going to go back to the um, the PowerPoint. I'm going to skip over some slides because I've demonstrated that uh, on 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 Block Five with you all. So um, now we're going to see how we will add a background. Now this is important in any story because we don't want just like a plain uh, background for um, our characters or our sprites. We want to bring it to life. We want to be able to to have some life and adding a background does that. So the first thing um, that you would do is go into the stage area at the same place um, where we had our sprites and we're going to click on this plus button. This will allow us to enter into the backdrop library. So I will jump into mblock5 again and you'll see that there's the devices tab sprites background. So we'll click on background and you'll see a plus sign and this sign will um, allow us to enter into our sprite library. So I've just, um, let's see if I can click it again. Here we go. Um, so you can see a wide range of uh, different backgrounds that you can uh, go through. And for this purpose, because Panda was um, in space, you can choose the space filter, as it mentioned in the in the PowerPoint, and you can select space three backdrop and then cl click OK. So it's really up to you which um, which filter you want to use or which backdrop you want to use. Uh, I'm going to be using space three. When you click OK, you will notice that now our backdrop our background is is changed to the one that you've just selected. And uh, when you go back to sprites, you can see that um, you know Panda is saying something that relates to the the background that um, that he's he's on. So it really brings the story uh, to life. So um, just going back here, once you've added uh, a backdrop or a background, um, you are now able, and this is just an example um, to do that, we're now able to give this a try. And, um, and this is part of the independent practice activity for your learner. Uh, and we're going to do, uh, you know, it will take the introduction, and I, I, I believe I may have missed that, but I'll go back into the lesson plan and, um, and, and talk about that. But um, in the beginning of the, the lesson, so if you're going back to the lesson plan, it shares a story, uh, kind of like a background story to um, what we're going to be doing with our panda or our sprite. So I'm just, just, I'm just going to scroll down here all through these uh, wonderful curriculum standards. Um, and in the warm up, you will see that there is a, um, a quick introduction to our space adventure story that we mentioned last week. Um, and it says, and you can read this to your learners, it says, Panda is a pilot from a, from a galaxy far, far away. Panda spent many months navigating across many miles of dangerous stars and asteroids and finally arrived at Earth safely. Unfortunately, Panda isn't able to speak. Panda hopes we can work together to communicate so Panda can say hello and tell us something about this amazing trip. So this background story gets um, or initiates your learners to write a and, and kind of inc in incorporate uh, creativity here um, to write a short three to four sentence introduction that Panda may say when meeting new friends on Earth. So um, this is part of the warm up activity and it will take um, you know, some time for them to write this uh, sentence or these three to four sentences, but we will use this as we go through um, the, the lesson. So once they have written their three to four sentence uh, story or, or introduction, now we're getting into the try it, which is the independent practice. And um, you can see that this is important that they write this in the warm up because they will use it 
or parts of it in their um, in their example code uh, and or actually rather in their code. The example code is for you as the um, as the educator um, and you can see there are two different uh, stories here. Two different events, but um, one I will mention that the first one is an extension type of uh, example versus the second one at the bottom here is just the uh, basic introduction or the basic uh, set of instructions that um, a student could put together. And we'll talk about the uh, extensions in, uh, in just a minute there. So, um, and uh, I'll jump into the extensions right now, just so uh, we have it on here. Um, part of the extensions, as you can see in the first, um, the first less or the first example there is uh, you can you can add or change the event uh, of to something besides the flag, the green flag. So you can see that. Um, let me just move up a little bit here. Uh, when space key is pressed, that's a different event compared to when flag is clicked. So that's an extension that um, your learners can um, definitely tap into. You can also add an additional sprite to introduce themselves um, or have a conversation with a panda. So um, adding an additional sprite is really uh, an extension as well. And then finally, um, add some motion to have the panda move across the screen, which will take what we learned um, last week and incorporate it into uh, lesson two. So these are the uh, extension activities and um, included in the curriculum or the folder that you would have downloaded from the website there is a quick video of an example that uses the extension um, to, to incorporate that into your into uh, you know particular learners um, example there. So uh, I'll open that and I'll show you. This is a quick video of Panda speaking to another sprite, um, and we'll see what is uh, happening here. Uh, so you can see that this sprite is you know trying to speak to Panda. Panda speaking in a different language, um, but he does not understand what Panda is saying. So you have this conversation um, between two different sprites and um, we'll go through a, an example as well that I have created to help you see how you can have this conversation. So it's really neat to see um, these uh, sprites interact with uh, each other and, and your students also being able to do that. Um, so we, we went through the, the uh, the extensions, and now it's time to share. Um, and just uh, before before we share, I want to go through how you can assess and how you can use um, these assessment um, you know strategies to um, engage peer feedback, which I had mentioned earlier in the lesson plan. Um, so what's really neat about this? Uh, type of feedback is that it encourages, um, you know, peer peer feedback and peer review. Um, and how this works and how this um, lesson was set up is that um, if if students are on different computers and working on their on their projects, their independent practice, um, they can uh, well you can um, facilitate this discussion by adding a sheet of paper on to the desk that they were at. And um, you're going to be going around, all the students are going to be going around and filling in two things as they see each other's programs. And those things are share one thing that you found interesting about the project and share uh, one recommendation for improving the project. So this will introduce something what we call iteration in computer science. Um, that we can continuously go in and update our code, have get some more feedback, update our code, get some more feedback, et cetera. So this is the iteration process that um, a lot of a lot of computer scientists um, use in programming. 
And then you're going to facilitate a discussion um, on what students uh, are have observed from viewing other students' projects and then reflect on the improvements and changes that they would make based on the feedback uh, they received. And what's really neat about this is um, a lot of times, uh, particular learners may be a little bit more uh, advanced than others, and that's absolutely fine because um, once they, once you have that facilitated discussion, um, you can see that, let's say, for example, Sally has was able to get their panda to jump up and down, and then the, uh, you know two, two or three, or even your whole class can talk about how how they did this, um, and then you can you know Sally can share her ideas with the rest of the class, and then they can teach each other and and keep moving forward with their learning in uh, in programming. So it's a really neat way to um, to help your learners to grow and not just stay. Um, within this one lesson, but usually uh, help each other learn as well. Now, because we're not in the classroom um, and it's really hard to um, to do this paper activity as as students are going around, um, there's alternative assessment ideas that are within this lesson plan. Um, you can use a screencast software to um, to allow your students to share their projects virtually. And um, you can also use that for parents. If you're a parent and you want to uh, have your child learn this um, uh, and give and give them feedback, you can share this project with uh, parents, siblings, classmates, etc., and get them to reflect um, on what they just uh, did there. Before I go into the the final wrap up or the quiz. Um, I wanted to be able to uh, just mention here that I'm going to show you an example that I have made on uh, M Block 5. And I'm also going to show you how you can share this with the broader or the global community in M Block or, or in Make Block, rather, when you have uh, an account. So, this is another way to share projects. And you will also see um, different projects shared from other people around the world. Um, and you can like these projects, you can um, get ideas from other projects, you can comment. There's so many other things that you can do on that community. I'll just do that after um, we close off this, uh, this part here. Um, so again, using your chat, we're just going to wrap up this, uh, this lesson or this lesson plan together and um, just ask these three simple questions. I hope you are able to answer them. So first question, and you can use this in the chat. Um, first question is, which block area does the say hello and the say, say hello for two seconds and the say hello belong to? So enter your answer in the chat and uh, hopefully we have the right answers coming in. So yes, I do see um, the answer is B, which is looks. It's in the looks area. Um, so it's it's really important to review the different areas such as events, sounds, and controls and um, explain that looks is the area that or the category that um, these blocks are situated in. Next question, um, and this one's really, really neat as well. Uh, which of the following programs can make Panda successfully introduce itself? Um, is it A, B, C, or D? So uh, take a minute to, to write in your response or type in your response. And we'll talk about these differences um, in just a second. All right, so a lot of uh, a lot of D's there, which is correct. The answer is uh, D, and you can talk about why the other answers are not correct. So, for example, um, A, it does not have an event. There's nothing to trigger um, Panda to speak, so it cannot be A. You have no event um, for A unless you actually um, click on this block stack 
uh, and make it speak um, by just clicking on it. But if you want an event to trigger it, um, that's kind of the uh, why A is not uh, correct. B is also not correct for the simple fact that these blocks are not connected to each other um, in terms of the event and the, the looks block, they're not connected to each other. So therefore, um, it's not going to trigger, um, you know, the Panda successfully speaking or introducing itself as well as C because those um, connections are not made. So a lot of good, um, good, a lot of good explanations on the chat there uh, by Monica. So that's that's awesome for number two. And finally, number three is, um, and I, oh, I, I didn't show you this one, so I'm going to go back uh, and I'll, I'll help answer this question. But if you want to save the file, um, you need to find the file button. Where is this button? Actually, I did mention this. I'm not going to go back. Um, where is this button? Is it A, block area, B, stage, C, script, or D, menu bar? So please put in your answer there. All right. Um, yes, it is D. It's the menu bar. Um, and it's not in the block area, stage area, or script area. So just going quickly back to mblock 5, um, you'll see that there is your file uh, save as, or uh, sorry, file save to your computer. And then you can select the area on your computer using whatever file manager that you have. To save that, um, so to save that mblock file. Now there's a button here called Save right beside uh, Publish. Those ones are used if you are connected to the mblock community, which I'll, I'll quickly show you so that we have some time um, for some Q and A. Um, but these buttons allow you um, to, or, or you can click them if you have a community sign on and you can see that using my avatar on the top right here um, it shows that i am already connected i have i have a profile with the community and i've shared um, some projects with um, in the community as well so if we are able to go to um to mblocks or, or mblocks website um, you will see that there is an option here it's called community and when you click on it um, you will see that you can create a new account. Uh, just getting mine to to load here. You can create a new account, um, and it's it's really simple to to do that. Um, I'm just gonna move uh, ahead here. Um, so mine, I'm already logged in, but there's going to be an option where you sign up. You can enter your um, you know, email address or you can use your Google um, accounts there and it integrates that seamlessly. Um, and you can see how many projects that you have created or saved uh, as a result of uh, pressing that other save button on mblock5. Um, and when you click on create, it uh, takes you to the Chrome version or the, uh, the online version. So uh, you'll, you can also uh, do that in, in, in those ways. Um, I'm just going to exit that for just a second. Um, so saving by clicking this save button, um, this allows you to save it onto the, um, the, uh, the community that you've just that you would have just joined. Um, I'm just uh, loading back again and there's, this is another way for you to save projects. So you can save it on your computer or you can save it on to this community um, area here. So I'm going to click on um, my profile and my projects just to show you uh, what I've done so far. So if you click on projects, I've created two projects there. Um, and um, I've created one for lesson two specifically. This will help you. Uh, will will show you what I've um, what I've done for this particular lesson, and I've named it Lesson Two, uh, Panda's Introduction. And on here, you can also 
it tell us or tell um, the community what this program is all about. So you can say that, um, you know, say Panda is um, or has arrived on Earth. Oops. Has arrived on Earth and is looking for a new friend to talk to. And that's kind of like an introduction to whatever this lesson um, or whatever this project that you have created. And then you can also give instructions on how to play this uh, particular project. For me, it is, I, I use an event called when space key is pressed. So um, you can say, please press the space bar to um, start the project. And uh, by, by clicking share, you can share this uh, project with the broader community. So if I click on share, um, it's now sharing it with everyone that is logged in. And um, you can also like or favorite these different, um, these different uh, projects that you will see on there. Um, you can only edit your own project. So if you click on another project, you are not able to edit it, but um, you can you can edit your own there. So and you can also provide comments as you can see here. So it's a really neat way, a really neat tool to um, to communicate with other people around the world um, by looking at their projects and um, and viewing them. The other area I wanted to uh, quickly show you before we open it up for uh, some Q&A and, and hand it over to Rami there, um, is this um, section, if you scroll down within the community after you've logged in, um, after you uh, share your project, um, and it is this curated studios, curated studios. So if you click on this make blocks theme on board, um, this is what we are actually doing for this training series. And you can see that people all around the globe have added different lessons. You can, you can see already that people have done lesson three, lesson four, et cetera. Um, so it's really simple to, uh, to add a project. So when you click on add a project, it, it asks you to enter or to um, paste a project link. And this link is, um, you're able to get it from when you click on this, uh, this publish button. So I'm just, I've just clicked on the publish button here. It might just take a second to load. So it will save for you. Um, and once you, once it's saved, um, you're also able to see, actually, let me go back to my projects very quickly, just to show you an example of, of what that is. Um, so give me one second. And this, this is something that um, we're gonna talk about if you can uh, do uh, later on after this session. Um, so you've seen that I have a couple of projects. If you click on it, you're going to get a project ID, which is on the top of where the, uh, the address bar is. All you need to do is copy it, go back to the community and paste it, and it will be able, you'll be able to contribute to the curated uh, studios there. So I'm gonna quickly show you that and then jump into uh, any Q and A that um, that you have for Rami and I. So here we go. This is the add a project, paste your link, and contribute, and you will sh you will see it uh, being shared there. And you can comment and like on um, on other people's projects. Um, to answer the a quick question on the chat. How do you get to the community website? If you 
if you just go to the Mblock website, there is a community tab right beside the download, and uh, that will open up and you can sign in using um, just your email address. You can use your you know, Google address, um, or you can um, use any other address, email address that um, you would like to use. So um, I do thank you for this time, uh, and I, I, I'll pass it on to, uh, to Rami here uh, to close us off and uh, have any Q&A um, during this, this time. Awesome. Thank you, Mina. Uh, I, uh, thanks for walking us through lesson two. Uh, again, uh, continuing our fundamentals in coding and how to use um, mBlock. Uh, I want to open this up to do two things. Number one, uh, summarize um, a little bit more and spend more time on the sharing, because uh, I know classroom management, uh, file sharing, file management is a huge component of uh, working. Um, so we're going to spend the next 10 minutes um, just delving a little bit deeper into that and then answering any questions uh, you may have um, uh, about this overall platform. Um, so uh, what I'll do is, uh, first of all, uh, look at the chat and answer questions as we go along. Um, and, and so a, a couple of things to differentiate. There is, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're throwing a lot of opportunities or possibilities out there for you of, of how to share and, and how to connect. Um, the, the first thing I want to uh, chat about is just file saving and file sharing. Um, so the files for mBlock are able to be saved and shared just like any other file you have. Um, so if, that, if you're uh, on your uh, desktop version of mBlock, whether it's Mac or Windows, or whether you're on the web version for a Chromebook or just a Chrome browser on a Windows or a Mac, um, you can save the files locally on the computer, and they're very small size files, just like you do with Scratch. So you can save that file, um, and that file then um, you can put into number one, uh, local desktop saving, so you can save it on your computer. Number two, you can save it on a USB key uh, if you still have those or use those. Uh, number three, you could save it on any cloud environment, so whether that's just like Google Drive or OneDrive or any other cloud-based environment from a personal perspective. Uh, but you could also save it on um, a, a cloud environment that's built into the school community. So that's Google Classroom or uh, if you're in Office 365 school, uh, that's on your OneDrive for the school where I would imagine the teacher can uh, you know, interact with the students, etc. So those are all types of file sharing. Um, However, you can also log into your account as a user of mBlock. So mBlock has an account uh, where you can save your files on the cloud in your link to your account online. Uh, so again, to summarize, you can save locally on your computer. You can save on a remote drive. Uh, you can also save on a cloud drive uh, that's associated with your account. Um, you can also save it on your mBlock five account for, on the cloud and then therefore a student can log in from anywhere a, a teacher or parent can log in from anywhere and access their files in addition to all that google classroom is actually fully integrated with mblock five and i did share a video link on how to set that up and, and I, I saw a note there maybe a request to do a separate session on on how to work on that um, but if you have google classroom uh, they've actually fully integrated google classroom with and block five, so you could do all the management, file sharing, login uh, uh, there. Um, and uh, lastly, um, what, what, what you could do uh, is uh, how to also share to the public community, um, which what, I, what we mean by that is uh, if you want to share your files to the public community, um, not just internally in your own school, uh, that's what the, Mina was sharing around the mBlock5 community. Uh, so again, the video resource for uh, setting up your Google Classroom environment uh, with mBlock5 is in, in the chat, and we'll also add it after this training to our website. So everything we'll, that we talk about will get added under educator resources. We'll list everything here. See, it's one spot to access everything. Uh, number two, um, what 
just so you know, we are um, uh, Logix obviously is a certified trainer for M for M Make Block as a whole. Uh, so we will be uh, going through our training program. This is part of it that you'll you'll receive training at the end or a certification at the end for this. Lastly, this is the community that Mino is talking about. So planet.mblock.cc. Um, you can access that by just going directly to that link. This is where you can again use that same mblock account that you did for for programming to upload projects, download projects, just like you do with Scratch. And I did notice a couple of questions in the chat, so I want to try to get to them. Uh, and if you have more questions about what I shared, please don't hesitate to, to ask there. Um, so how do you differentiate between um, uh, Scratch and mBlock when talking to staff who are used to Scratch? So again, mBlock is a platform that's built on top of Scratch. So it's actually core Scratch. However, it has a lot of added features and, and there is on our website here a table. If you just keep on scrolling down uh, on this page, a table that actually compares features of Scratch and uh, mBlock. And what's nice to know is your Scratch files are actually, uh, uh, you can open them on, um, on uh, uh, mBlock 5. So the file types are the same and compatible. So that hopefully answers your question there. Uh, second question is on the Mac version of mBlock, can you link it to your mBlock account? Um, so yes, uh, there is a way to uh, publish your export files and link your work to uh, uh, um, your mBlock account. Uh, and, and again, maybe I'll, we'll uh, be sure to share the resource on how to do that on YouTube uh, or link it to this resource bank. Um, Next question is, how do you play the project in full screen? So that's just when you're in the um, when you're in M block, uh, there is just like scratch. You can click uh, open up in full screen mode and uh, and and play in your project. So while I'm setting that up on my window, maybe I'll try to answer another question. Um, so with regards to downloading the content from the last presentation, access to the content here, you don't need a Google Classroom. Uh, I apologize. There was a setting mix up. Uh, but now it's an open public link, uh, so you don't need any special permission. If you just click on the download curriculum material, uh, you'll be able to access the lessons, and that also answers the next question, which is how do you find the lessons? Again, they're all on logicsacademy.com forward slash steam on board. Below each lesson name, you'll see a link that says download the curriculum. Um, again, another question, what's the difference between um, um, make block and make code? So Make Block is a company, uh, an organization that created the M Block software, as well as uh, created a lot of hardware. It's a Steam organization that created uh, the robots like uh, Mbot, Cody Rocky, AirBlock, a laser cutter, 3D printer. They have a full K to 12 Steam selection, um, and that's the company name. Make Code is a software that's built by uh, Microsoft that you can use. Um, and, and, and make code is a, a, an alternative to uh, Scratch. So uh, Scratch is a software created by MIT. MBlock is a software created by MakeBlock, and make code is a software created by Microsoft. I know there's lots of makes and make blocks and make codes and <laughs> uh, lots of confusion there in the naming, but they are three uh, different software, all with pros and cons. Uh, and this table is put there to try to help you see some of the things you can do in each of them. Yes, uh, you will be receiving the certificate for those who've completed uh, all the classes. So at the end of the whole course. Uh, any other questions? I, I think hopefully you've covered, uh, tried to go through the chat and cover all of them fairly quickly here. Uh, any other questions you may have? Um, uh, uh, of course, we'll stick around for a few more minutes after uh, in, uh, right now, uh, but I hope you found this uh, enjoyable, answered uh, your questions, and again, got us to the next level of fundamentals of coding and exploring this platform and all its features. Uh, as you can imagine, we're going to keep on continuing going deeper and deeper every week. Uh, yes, Heather, if you created an mBlock account, you, that same account is used for your uh, mBlock community. Um, so again, if, if you have an account here, and this is where you can create an account or log in with your Google Classroom 
or uh, log in with an existing account. Uh, so you could see here uh, where you can log in or sign up if you don't have an account yet. Uh, and then that same one is what allows you to publish, to share, uh, and to jump into the global community uh, on mBlock itself. Rami, I did see a message there for um, hands-on. And I forgot to mention this um, before the, the end of that session that I was taught, like today's session. Um, is that yeah? The ha you will get a chance to do hands-on, and uh, hopefully um, you get a chance uh, this for this coming week. Um, and I, I wanted to mention that there's three things that you can do to get this hands-on uh, activity um, done by you. So first thing is to create a project of the panda speaking to another sprite with a background. The second thing is to create a community account on uh, on mBlock. And then the third thing is share your project uh, with the community in the in the created community studio. So uh, we'll hopefully send that out um, as this quick summary uh, to get your hands on uh, learning and be able to share what you've actually built on your own um, uh, globally in this mBlock community. So we will do more hands on as we go through the lessons. Great, thank you so much, uh, Mina. Um, and, and of course, this is meant to be a hands-on course. I know at the beginning, there's always lots of questions uh, to, to get started and files and file sharing. So we're hoping we're uh, moving forward with uh, that you're working alongside and, uh, and, and creating your own. Uh, any other questions that anyone may have, uh, feel free to even unmute yourself uh, if you want to ask uh, verbally uh, or uh, write it into uh, into the chat as always. Uh, awesome uh, there. I see uh, folks have already uploaded a project to, to the global community. That's wonderful um, and, and uh, great to, to see that happening. And again, uh, lots of ways to connect. So make sure to continue uh, the conversation, um, you know, in between now and next Friday in our uh, uh, logics community as well. So we're always monitoring that and we can answer questions. Uh -huh. Hi, Remy.